Hello, hello, Sarah of SEK Handmade here, and today I'm going to share with you the Bavarian stitch in the round. This is an incredibly complicated looking stitch that's really not that complicated. Let's go. The Bavarian stitch is this highly textured, really gorgeous stitch that gives just the most wonderful effect. I absolutely love it. It is often seen made in a blanket in the round, and each round is often then a different color. You can see I have made a hat here, and I have made it in the round uh, for my hat just using two colors, but you can also, with a slight adjustment, make it all in one color super easily, which is also so highly texturized and I think just really, really gorgeous. Today, I'm going to be showing you the two color version of the Bavarian stitch. This can be worked in as many colors as you want in the exact same way. So I have my two colors of yarn here. That's what you're gonna need for this tutorial as well as a matching hook for the size of yarn you're using. So no specific extra tools necessary, just two colors of yarn and the hook to go along with them. You can absolutely make your Bavarian stitch back into a chain, but I find that it stabilizes it really nicely to work it after a row of stitches, you can do whatever row of stitches you want. I'm gonna go ahead and make a foundation chain of foundation single crochets. They need to be a multiple of six and it needs to be long enough that you can work the stitch in the round like we're going to be. So I will link a tutorial below for the foundation single crochet so that you can give that a try if you'd like to as well. So. We're gonna make a, a long row of single crochet foundation chains in a multiple of six. I've made my long chain here of foundation stitches. I decided to go with 36. That will give me six diamond shapes. And so now all I need to do to start working in the round is join my chain, my foundation stitches in the round. So I'm gonna bring my last stitch over to my first stitch, insert my hook into that first stitch. You've got both tails here, so be sure to grab your working yarn and not your little tail that you started with. I've definitely done that before. And you're just gonna slip stitch so that you've got a circle of stitches there. You're going to chain one, and then you're gonna put a single crochet in that very first stitch. For this first row, we're going to be making just the top half of the triangles. You'll see that that gives, that lays a nice flat edge around our stitches that we've made here and gives a flat edge to the start of our project. So we've done a single crochet in our first stitch. We're gonna skip the next two stitches and we're gonna put a fan in this third stitch here. My fan is going to consist of four double crochets. One, two, three, four double crochets all worked into that same stitch. Then I'm gonna chain one, and then I'm gonna work four more double crochets into that exact same stitch. One, two, three, and four. And that is our first fan and the top of one of those triangles. To make it symmetrical, you're going to skip two stitches and be careful because that first stitch that you need to skip can kind of be hiding under your fan. You've squished a lot of stitches into that one stitch there. So 
I like to shift mine over and make sure I'm not <laughs> missing this stitch here. If you get to the end of your round and your stitch count was off, it's potentially that you've missed one of those stitches that's been hiding under there. So I'm gonna skip one, two stitches, and I'm going to single crochet into the next stitch. And then you're just going to repeat that pattern all the way around. I'm gonna skip two more stitches, and then I'm gonna work four double crochets into that next stitch, two, three, four. I'm gonna chain one and work four more double crochets into that same stitch. One, two, three, four. Again, I'm gonna squish my stitches over a little bit just to make sure I haven't missed <laughs> that hiding stitch there. I'm gonna skip one, two, and single crochet in the next. And you just continue that all the way around. All right, once you've created all of your fans and you're back to the beginning, you're going to go ahead and slip stitch into the very first single crochet you made. So I'm skipping my last two stitches, just like I did in every other fan, and I'm gonna slip stitch into my single crochet. And that finishes our very first round. If you'd like to be mm, a little finicky or perfectionistic, <laughs> you could do an invisible join there. You're gonna cut the yarn anyways, and I'll link the video for the invisible join below just in case you wanna give that a try. But we're all done with our first color, so we're gonna cut that and pull it through and grab our second color. Now, this looks a little more like a uh, a flat ring than something being worked in the round. But as we work the second round, it's gonna pull all of these in and together and connect them. And then it will start to lay up flat like it's supposed to. So grab your second color. And you're going to go ahead and join at any of the chain spaces in your fan. It does not matter what chain space you join in. One of the things I love about this is because you can move this around, it's virtually seamless. You cannot really see where you stop and start the rounds. And so it's, it's just a really gorgeous fabric. So starting at any of the chain spaces in your fans, you're just gonna start your new yarn. So you're gonna insert your hook, take your new color, pull up a loop, chain one, and then we're gonna put a single crochet into that very same chain space. So I'm gonna insert my hook, pull up another loop and make a single crochet. So the very next thing we need to do is travel to the center. We are essentially gonna work a big decrease and we want them to gather in the center. So we need to travel to the center of our V first so that all the stitches pull up in the center instead of leaning over to one side. So to do that, we are going to chain three stitches, one, two, three and then what we're going to do is we're going to work essentially back post double crochets around each of the double crochets of our fan but what we're going to do is essentially back post double crochet eight stitches together so we're not going to complete them let me show you how so i'm going to yarn over and then just like a back post double crochet, I'm gonna go from back to front, front to back around the post of 
my double crochet there. You can see my yarn is wrapped around the post of that double crochet. And then I'm only going to pull yarn over and pull through two loops and leave a loop on my hook. So I'm not going to complete that double crochet. And then I'm going to continue to do this down the next three double crochets. So yarn over, back post double crochet, around my next double crochet, yarn over, pull through two loops. Do it again with the next one, back post double crochet, around my next double crochet from before, yarn over, pull through two loops, complete it one more time on our last of the four from this uh, diamond shape or triangle, I guess at this point, <laughs> yarn over, pull up a loop, mm, something went wonky there. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops. Come on. All right, so I have one, two, three, four, five loops on my hook here. I'm going to skip the single crochet that was in between our fan stitches and I'm gonna work up the side of my next fan. So yarn over, work around that bottom double crochet, pull up a loop, pull through two loops. Work around the next double crochet, pull through two loops. Yarn over, work around the next double crochet, yarn over, pull through two loops. I've got one left, insert my hook, like a back post double crochet through that final one. And oh my goodness, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine loops on my hook. Yarn over, use your tensioning hand to kind of pull down on your work and that's gonna open up all these loops. See how I've got a little space there. Make sure you tip your hook so that the hook faces down. If you're gonna try to pull like this, it's gonna get caught on all of your loops. So tip it down and gently pull through every single one of the nine loops on your hook. Woo! Then we're gonna close this with a chain. And that is our double crochet decrease. Now we need to travel back over to the other peak. So we're going to chain three. And then just like before, we're going to attach at the center of our fan in the chain space. So go ahead and just place a single crochet right in that chain space. And then we're just going to repeat that around. Remember, the very first thing we need to do is to travel to the center so that our decreases all end up in the V. Remember, we work four double back post double crochets on one side and four on the other side, and then close them up. So start by chaining three, one, two, three, and then work our back post double crochet eight together. Remember, it is a decrease, so we're not finishing those double crochets. You're going to yarn over, work your back post stitch, yarn over, and just pull through two loops. Don't complete it. And we're going to go through all four double crochets on one side. If your yarn gets caught up totally normal, skip that single crochet right there in the center and work back up the other side. Remembering, of course, not to complete that stitch. If you find when you get towards the end here that it gets a little finicky or your yarn gets caught up, that's totally normal. You have got a lot of stitches on your hook here. So complete that final stitch and I have nine loops on my hook. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And just like before, yarn over, pull through all of those loops and close it with a chain. 
Then we've got to travel back over, so we're going to chain one, two, three to get us back over to that other peak and single crochet again. Then you're just going to repeat that around. All right, last one. I'm going to yarn over, pull through all of my nine loops. Now this does not have to be done in one fell swoop. You can like pull through a couple, pull through a couple, pull through a couple at a time. Sometimes that can be easier than trying to pull through all of them at once. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm gonna chain to close it. Then I'm gonna chain three, one, two, three. And I have made a mess. <laughs> Make sure I'm grabbing all of my loops there. And then I'm going to join into the top of my single crochet with a slip stitch. This time you are not going to cut your yarn because you want the top of this triangle or this diamond, sorry, you want the top of this diamond to be the same color as the bottom of the diamond. So we're gonna chain one and we're going to single crochet in the single crochet. And then we're going to work our fan into the chain that we used to close our double crochet decrease. So that little teeny hole right there. You're going to yarn over, insert your hook into that chain, and work your double crochets. The fan is worked exactly the same as it was previously. So four double crochets into that same chain there. So I've done one, two, three, and this is number four. You want that chain nice and tight because it leaves you without being holy, but you're putting a lot of stitches in there. So if you need to scooch them over a little bit, that's totally normal. After you do that, you're going to chain one and then complete your fan by working four more double crochets into the chain you were just working in. So one, two, three, and four. And then I'm going to single crochet in my single crochet. And that's what's going to tack down the other side of my fan. And then you just keep repeating that same pattern all the way around. You're squishing a lot of stitches in that little chain there so it's totally normal that the last few stitches are maybe a little more challenging to get in there all right and then you're going to single crochet or you're going to slip stitch pardon me into the first single crochet of your round and then again you're going to snip your yarn and you can either go back to your first color or you could keep going on and on with a new color for every single round. I want to go ahead and do one more round in my lighter color because it's a little different. I just want to show you a little tip for um, how it might look a little different. I also want you to notice that if you look at my piece of fabric here you can see that the edges kind of uh, lean out a little bit. That's totally normal when your final round is the fan stitch. It's the decrease stitches that kind of pull them all in. Don't worry if your edges um, when you are on have ended a fan row kind of lean out a little bit. They'll get sucked back in. So just like before you can join your next color at any of the chain spaces at the center of your fans. So 
If you want to try to keep all of your ends in about the same place, you might want to kind of bounce back and forth. Um, but it, it really doesn't matter. As long as you weave your ends in carefully, nobody's going to be able to see your seam. So I'm just going to pick one of my chain spaces. I'm going to insert my hook, take my next color, pull up a loop here, chain one and work a single crochet. So to start off, remember I'm going to chain three. One, two, three. I'm going to work my back post double crochets into my one, two, three, four double crochets here. And then I want to show you, it can get a little confusing. You may think, oh gosh, I think I might have an extra double crochet there. You don't. That's your chain three, just like this chain three that we made here. So do not work into those chains. You're going to skip right over those. You're going to skip your single crochet. And mine is gapping there because that's my final. Um, stitch that I pulled through. And then same thing on this side. You've got your chain stitches here, and then you've got your double crochet. So if you are like, gosh, I have five double crochets on that one, double check to make sure you haven't accidentally worked around your chain space. And then I'm going to complete my double crochet decrease by pulling through all nine loops on my hook, closing it with a chain just like before, chaining three to get over to my next peak, and placing a single crochet there. You can keep alternating between your fans and your double crochet decreases until your pattern tells you differently or you're ready to stop. Thank you so much for joining me in learning this fun stitch today. I hope I've demystified the Bavarian stitch and that you're ready to go on a project. Check out the links in the description below for patterns using this stitch, as well as other helpful tutorials. It is always my goal to help you grow confidently in your craft. I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel, turn on notifications, like this video, and maybe even share it with a friend. Thank you so much for joining me today and happy crafting.